I don't want to take much time. To be honest, it's very difficult uh, to speak or hold a microphone when great anointing is around. So I want to be quick. Uh, my name is Pastor Terry. And this is my beautiful wife, Pastor Terry. Too loud, she's taking. Don't touch it. Don't blow down my fuerte. And when the pastor's here of Terrace Dallas Church, you there? Yeah. Uh, we're so happy for you to be here in the house. Estamos muy felices de verlos aquí. And we're happy to welcome you. Y le damos la bienvenida. To the Terrace USA tour. Twenty twenty three. And a rare honor, y un honor to invite the next servant of God to the altar. Para invitar al hombre de Dios al altar. I just want to say one thing. Quiero decir una cosa. Can you ask your neighbor? Pregúntale a tu vecino. What reward are you looking for? Qué recompensa estás buscando? Ask your other neighbor. What reward are you looking for? Qué recompensa estás buscando? And tell them it's inside of a prophet. Y dile, Say it louder to them. It's inside of a prophet. Uh, the Bible says, La Biblia dice, Receive a prophet so para de un in the name or the revelation en el de la that he is a prophet. Que es un and you will receive a prophet's reward. Can I tell you what a prophet's reward is? Whatever they speak Lo que habla will come to pass. Va a pasar. What determines whether you receive the reward or not is how well you can receive the prophet in the revelation. I know this one is a true prophet. Can we all stand to our feet? Clap our hands. Receive the prophet of the Lord. Receive the prophet of the Lord. Let me greet you again in the name of Jesus. You know, I have uh, so many experiences uh, being with uh, my father in the Lord. We are not people that travel everywhere. You know, before we can travel, we have to hear God. Amen. God has to give us a green light before we can do anything else. And that has made us to be different from many people. Because people use their hearts to do the things of God. But we use the voice of God to follow His direction. Us being here, I can tell you, it's a, it's a blessing for me. Let's open the book of Matthew chapter 3 verse 13. I have so many messages in my heart. You know, but when we were driving in, uh, uh, in Chicago, you know, my father said, I want you to teach people about saving. Because I believe I've finished so many years of my saving. And I'm still standing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are ready to go to the Word of God? Amen. You are ready to learn? Amen. Let me see your hand in the book because I'm going to give you a lot of important stuff. And when you get home, have time to read those. I don't think that's normal stuff you're going to be writing. They, 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 they want to help you a lot. They want to help you. You know, when 
he said to me, I want you to teach these people about sex. I said, people, they preach about submission. They themselves, they fail to submit. You are, you are teaching people about submission. But you yourself, you fail to submit. Why? How, do, how can you teach people about something that you don't know? Let me have someone to read for me. Uh, Matthew chapter 3, starting from 13. This is going to be a very different message. Matthew chapter number 3, verse number 13. Mm -hmm. Amen. It reads, Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, It should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. Let us bow our heads and we pray. Find the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. Teach us how to be like you. Teach us through your word how to live our lives. We thank you, Lord. Our hearts are ready. Our ears have opened. We are here to hear from you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You know, when I was uh, reading about this, there are so many things that I was learning about Jesus. Jesus. When you read about him, you will know that from the beginning he was there. There came a time Jesus created his position. So we know position that there is was. To come and live with men. But I say no great people. And the word of God says, when he reached before John, so I don't buy even one. John looked at him and he said, so what he wrote, he I think you are the one to baptize me. Do anything about this. But John said to him, No. He said, no. Hallelujah. Okay. Jesus, yes, when he reached before John, just said to him, You must baptize me. Jesus said, No. I cannot baptize you. Let's do this so that the scriptures can be fulfilled. Any man that bows to another man shows submission. This thing of submission is Jesus who started it. He decided to lose his position. Come and live with me and you. More so, he went to a man and lived down. Until you learn to lose yourself, it will be very difficult for you to serve. Submission needs people that can lose themselves. And someone can say, what do you mean by losing myself? You know, all of us here when we are born, we are born with dreams, visions, you want to be like this, you want to be a doctor, you want to be a teacher. Losing yourself, it makes the Spirit of God to overshadow you. You know, when I was reading this, I said, why would Jesus need to go through a man and to start a ministry? Let us just say Amen. Why would Jesus need a man to start his own ministry? Today, boy. We are learning from him. You know, many of us, if you want people 
You cannot tip well, mission where else you will serve the faith to submit. Jesus laid a foundation of submission. You know, in those days, let me tell you that in those days when they baptized people, it's not like nowadays where they do you like this. Where you, you just have to nudge back and come back. In those days, you would kneel down. You put your head inside the water and you come back up. You cannot submit unless you lose yourself. And you know when I was raising about this, I said, how many people can do what Jesus did? We are living in a time of people that are full of pride. The only thing that they want to do is to be praised and be told how great they are. You people that are serving here in the church, let me tell you something. You need to lose your life. When you read the word of God, the word of God says, lose your life for my sake, you shall regain it. Amen. And many of us, you don't know that this verse, it has got a lot of meanings. One of the meanings <coughs> is to lose your dreams in life. You cannot follow Jesus as long as you still have dreams. Lose your life for him. Lose your position. How many of you are here or are you ready to lose your life? Are you ready to lose your position? Are you ready to lose who you are? You know when I was growing up, I want to tell you this. I was very wise at school. And many people thought I would go to school and be you know, a doctor. But instead of me being going to school, I found myself in the church. And one day one of my aunties went to my mom and she said, Why don't you tell your child to go to school? His cousins are going to school. They are studying. What does? Why is he wasting so much time in the church? You know, my mom, one day she came crying. She said to me, I will leave you to choose. But whatever that you choose, make sure it's from your heart. Because from today I choose Jesus. I decided to choose Jesus. I saw. I decided to lose myself. I decided to lose my position. I decided to lose my wisdom. I went to church. I bow myself. So I'm here to serve. Amen. You cannot serve. Tell your neighbor, you cannot serve unless you lose yourself. Unless you lose your position. Say amen. How many of you you are ready to lose yourself? And when you are in a process of losing yourself, many people are going to call your names. And your relatives are going to speak against you. But they are going to tell you how useless you are. But they won't even call you lazy. This man is very lazy. Let us go to 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 4. I don't want to talk too much because you have told that the Reyes capítulo 2 verse 4. I know that I can talk too much. I'll just make this message very short. Vamos a hacer este mensaje muy corto. 
2 Kings chapter 2 verse 4. Amen. Let's make it as short as possible. It reads, Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to Jericho. But Elisha replied again, As surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together to Jericho. Then the group of prophets from Jericho came to Elisha and asked him, Did you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you today? Of course I know, Elisha answered, but be quiet about it. Then Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to the Jordan River. But again Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, I will never leave you. So they went on together. Fifty men from the group of prophets also went and watched from a distance as Elijah and Elisha stopped beside the Jordan River. Then Elijah folded his cloak together and struck the water with it. You can stop in there. You know, <laughs> hallelujah. You know, there's another version that doesn't say prophets. It is a prophet. It says the sons of the prophets. It is a hijos de prophetas. Who has got that vision? I mean that version. Yeah, it's the the version? Yes. Yes. Let me hear that one. It says verse 7. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets. 50 men of the sons of the prophets. You know, when I was studying this, I realized that all of us one day, we have to meet the sons of the prophets. And you know what is the job of the sons of the prophets? Is to discourage you. Is to stop you from serving God. You know, many people they don't know that there's a difference between knowledge and information. But these sons of prophets, they were trained to be prophets. You know, when you are trained to be a prophet, let me tell you, Elisha, many people they don't know this thing, Elisha was a farmer. So Elias. And he decided to leave farming and come and serve. So Many of the sons of the prophet, they are not ready to serve. You know, their job is to discourage those that are serving. Is to give you a prophecy and say, ah, where are you going? Don't you know that this man will be taken away from you? And I had a question that why they couldn't prophesy Elijah? <laughs> Why are they targeting the one who's serving? Yeah. I don't know if you hear what I'm trying to say to you. Why are they targeting the one who's serving? They were supposed to tell Elijah that today God will take you away. And that's a prophecy. Many of the sons of the prophets, they can't see. There's a difference between prophesying and seeing in the spirit. These are people that are just roaming the streets. They are waiting for the people that are just passing and starting to give and, and give them useless prophecies. I can tell you, many of us who are still meeting the sons of the prophets today, you know, that family that is standing against you to serve God, those are the sons of the prophets. Many people, they don't know that we're, we're, even in the church today, we're sons of the prophets. They are sitting with you. When the pastor says receive, they also say amen. But at the corner, they come to you and ask you, why do you love that man like this? What is it that he has done for you? That's their job. They can prophesy, but they can't see. Because if they are able to see, 
God was going to tell them that leave this man because he's about to take over. Many people who met the sons of the prophets today, their lives are destroyed. If you give them an ear, a vision that God has given you will vanish. If you listen to them, your church will be scattered. If you listen to them, your marriage will be broken. These are the people who destroy everything in the name of say I can prophesy you. Let the church say amen. Amen. But many of them, the target people that are serving in the house of God. And the question is that why do they target the ones that are serving? Ask your neighbor, why do they target? Why do they Those that are saved. Amen. 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 Even today, they are here. So I Today, we have sons of the prophets here. It's to discourage those that are working in the house of God. Is to discourage those that are serving the pastor. They want to destroy you. They are here. They are listening to me when I'm preaching. They question everything. They can even went to a level of telling you that you are more anointed than that man. What are you still doing here? So they can tell you that you are too much anointed. You don't need that man. Tell your neighbor's neighbor, choose to be given an information or to be given knowledge. The sons of the prophet, they are full of information. They got the information even when they started churches because of information. They can't serve. They are not ready to do that. And their job is to attack you. If you give them a chance, you will lose what God wants to do with your life. Say amen. Say amen. One of the best things that I decided to do is to close my ears. Whenever my father says, let's go, I don't listen to anybody. I take my small bag, I follow him. I've met so many sons of the prophets in my life because they wanted to distract me from myself. Those that are standing against yourself. Amen. Amen. Say amen. amen. Say I refuse, I refuse to be given information. To be given information. Let, let me tell you this. You people, you don't know that there these sons of the prophets, they were supposed to take over from Elijah. You don't know that. They were trained for that. I'm sure you don't know that. But instead, God decided to use the one that is saving. You can never receive the Spirit of God unless you learn to save. Why would Jesus go and kneel in front of a man who was laying a foundation? That this is how things are supposed to be done. When we are serving God, we are ready to be attacked. Amen. But there's a calm waiting for you. Let us go to the book of Joshua chapter 1. I want to finish. I don't want to talk to you. I want to finish. We 
were made sons of the prophets everywhere. They're coming to prophesy. Tell you that, don't you know that you are not going to hear? Don't you know that there are people that are hating you in this church? Giving you false prophecies. They can prophesy, but they can't see. Even today, we have got people who can prophesy, but they can't see. Because if they were able to see, we're supposed to give the prophecy to the senior men of God. And tell you that, oh, Master, let your heart rejoice. Because today, God will take you. But instead, they said, to, to, to attack. They are coming for you. They are coming for you. Tell your neighbor they are coming for you. Tell your neighbor they are coming for you. They are coming for you. You know, because many of us, we, we want to receive a but we don't know how to do it. Find the right channels of receiving. You want to receive something, but you don't know how to. Well, I asked him, Pastor Terry. I said to him, My saving has worked for me. I even said to him, Everything about my body, prophecy. He said to me, Why do you say that? I said, before I can travel anywhere, under my feet here, they will start to eat very serious. I'll, I'll be doing it. I told him that I know that there's a tree coming. Everything, just prophets. When you serve God, you will honor him. Close your ears from wrong people. I hate to discourage you. Let us read. Let's finish. Let's finish. Joshua chapter 1 verse 2. It reads, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon that I have given unto you. You can stop it there. You know, I, I want to come to an end of my message. But the scriptures that I'll give you after this. You know, when you, when you read here, God said to Joshua, My servant is dead. And I said to myself when I was reading this scripture, what is the meaning of this? Why would Moses die before he can accomplish the mission that God has given? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Anyone who starts a vision, let me not say anyone, many of Pastors who start a vision for the God, it becomes difficult for them to finish it. I don't know if you ever said Any man that God has given a vision, it will be difficult for that man to complete that vision. That's the reason why now Joshua came in. When your father stops, those that have been serving God is their time to be on. 
I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when it comes to storms, it's, it's, it's you now who must come and carry on. And I've checked it so many times. Charlie's missionary church. The one who started it. <laughs> It's not here to see what is happening. You start a vision. It will be impossible for you to finish it. You know why? Do you know why most of some servants of God they never finish? Huh? Do you want to know why? There are people behind them. There are people behind them. That are in the lady. 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 There comes the time now. To carry on. If you are serving God, God will honor you. You will reach Kane. You know, many people they, they say, but if I serve God, what am I going to get from serving God? You, you are about to reach Kane. And if you read the, the word of God said, God said to Joshua, wherever your feet touch, you are sakatalaya. Wherever your feet touch, Amen. and I never had God say this to Moses. It was time for Joshua to be paid. But when you serve God, there will be a time when you be paid. Full price. You know, sometimes when I look at my father, say, "So can let your father listen." If we just allow Dr. Koromi to wake up from where he is now, what do you say? Because the day he died, let me tell you this, God put Moses on a mountain. He said, look at Canaan. And the servant of God was just standing there looking at him. And God said, Your days are finished. And if his days are finished, who's supposed to pay? When you read the Bible, the Bible says, When the servant of God was in the the mountain, the young man Joshua will be there waiting for him. It does not matter how many days it takes. Others, they are busy. You know, others they are busy. They are eating. They are enjoying. They are dancing. There's parties going on. But a young boy will be waiting there, waiting for the master to come down. I want to finish. God showed Moses that Moses, you see them. They escaped. One day when I was with my father, he said to me, his father said to him, I saw your chalice crossing the border. Yeah. You know, he, he saw, but he won't be part of it. Many who starts a vision. I'm not saying all of them, not all, but many who starts, it's impossible to finish. They always leave before time. And after they leave, it's your time to be honored. Those that have been serving, it's their time to be honored. I'm very sure that many elders of, you know, elders of uh, what we call Israel, they were so much shocked to that. Who is Joshua taking over? They have forgotten that when he was serving, they were busy dancing. 
Oh, is it dancing? This was the ass. Oh, we're dancing. That's right. Eating me. Because people forget, when you say God, people they forget you. Jesus is about to pay. I said, Jesus is about to pay you. I can to hear you, amen. God will honor you by reaching to pay. If today you say God has given me a vision, make sure it's God. Because it is God. Sometimes I look at people when they start their own churches. Do they know the meaning of starting a vision from the ground? If it's God telling them, they are just here to lay a foundation. So you choose today. Do you want God to start from zero? <laughs> or you want to find a man? You submit yourself. <laughs> Choose. Choose. Let's all stand up. Choose. If Jesus comes and be baptized, it's time for John to die. Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. If, if, if Jesus comes and be baptized, John must come to an end. John must leave. But before Jesus took over, he said, let me go down. To what this man has done all along. Because John started to work when Jesus was still playing, when he was still working with his father. He was busy opening a way for him, laying a foundation. And the day John saw Jesus, in his heart he knew that this is the end of my ministry. Because even some people that were with him, they left him. They followed Jesus. Lift up your hands. Say, God, give me a spirit of serving you. Say, Holy Spirit, teach my heart to follow you. Say, Jesus, teach me to be like you. To be like you. Open your mouth and pray. Pray! In Jesus' mighty name. Let me give you this scripture to write them down. You read them when you get off. They are so many. Let me give you. Colossians chapter 3, 23 to 24. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. You must be quick. You know, there are, there are many. One of my favorites. Matthew chapter 20, 26 to 28. My favorite is my favorite. John chapter 13. Verse 12. These verses they are going, they are going to help you in your journey of serving. They are going to help you out. May God strengthen your heart. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10, 24. Mark 9, 35. And you can also write Mark 10, 44 to 45. Philippians chapter 2, verse 1. 
John 15, 12. Juan capítulo 15, versículo 12. When you get home, uh, have time to study all those scriptures. Cuando tengas tiempo, lee las escrituras. You know, and God will help you. Y Dios te ayudará. God bless you.